Welcome to section 21 of the parasites. This is our overview figure showing the parasites you need to know for step one. In this lecture, we will be talking about the last cestode or tapeworm called Echinococcus granulosus, which you can see right here. This diagram shows an abbreviated form of the life cycle of Echinococcus granulosus. I want you to first focus on the dog. The dog releases an egg, also called the ovum, and will follow this arrow going to the sheep. And once inside the sheep, this parasite will form these hydatid cysts. And if the dog then eats some of the meat from a sheep that was infected with a parasite, then the dog will eat these hydatid cysts and perpetuate the infection. Now the reason it's relevant for us is because we can accidentally eat the egg instead of the sheep, basically through the fecal oral route. Now it's safe to assume that humans don't go around eating dog feces, so what actually happens is that food or fingers get contaminated with dog feces that have these eggs, and then it gets eaten by a human. So this is the fecal oral route, but this is the more practical way that the fecal oral route is actually carried out. Anyways, these eggs, which you can see here, go into the body, and you can see them go down and eventually enter organs, such as the liver. And it's here that they would form these hydatid cysts. And they can go to other organs. The liver is just the most common location. So with this conceptual framework, let's dive into the details of Echinococcus granulosus. Now our story takes place in the house of a kooky old woman. She's not a crazy cat lady, she's a crazy cock lady. Look at all those cocks roaming around her kitchen. Some on the counter, the ground, one's on the table, and there's even one on her shoulder. All these cocks with a grandma represent Echinococcus granulosus. Now she's a strange lady for multiple reasons. As you can now see, she's feeding her sweet grandson a bunch of worms. Not a great meal, but this young man is really quite polite about it. He knows that his grandma struggles, so instead of telling her he doesn't want to eat the worm meal, he just tapes them under the table so she can't find them. Well, these taped worms represent the fact that Echinococcus granulosus is a tapeworm, or a cestode. Here's a microscopic specimen of the actual tapeworm of Echinococcus granulosus. Now here's one of the lady's chickens outside in the yard laying eggs. As you can see, the lady also has a dog. This one is currently dragging its poopy bum all over the ground. Yeah, dogs are really gross. Anyways, the chicken eggs have been laid in the dog's poop, which represents the fact that Echinococcus eggs are found in dog feces. Now look at that grandpa. He's a jolly and small man and likes to eat chicken eggs when he sits on his beanbag. Look at those cracked eggs. He just eats them raw, shell and all. This eating of eggs represents the fact that Echinococcus granulosus occurs by ingesting eggs from dog feces. So again, eggs in dog poop, then eaten by this old man, represents that humans get Echinococcus granulosus infections by ingesting eggs from food contaminated with dog feces. Now we can see another dog back here on the patio. In its dog food dish is a little sheep, which apparently thought the dish was a good place to take a nap. This obviously confuses the dog. Look at those question marks above that dog. Is he supposed to eat it? He's not sure. Anyways, this represents how sheep are an intermediate host for the life cycle of Echinococcus granulosus. So they're the ones that eat the eggs and get the hydatid cysts. And then the dogs eat parts of the sheep and then the life cycle continues. And again, we have the sheep here. It can produce the hydatid cysts and the dog can eat parts of the sheep and release more eggs, which can then be eaten by the human. Now let's go back to that poo stain created by that dog. The stain kind of takes the shape of the intestines, and one of the eggs the chicken laid here actually hatched. I guess it was a fertilized egg. Good thing they didn't cook it, or eat it raw, I guess, which is what that old man would have done. So this idea should help you remember that eggs hatch into larvae within the intestines. So a human eats the egg, then it hatches into a larvae in the intestines. Once hatched, the larvae will travel to the liver and form hydatid cysts. To help you remember that cysts occur in the liver, we have intentionally made the beanbag shaped and colored like a liver. Now notice that the big beanbag has these little bulging wounds in it. This is created by the dogs biting the beanbag, destroying the integrity of the outer layer of the beanbag. And these little bulging tears in the beanbag look like those cysts, much like hydatid cysts. Lastly, notice that the cysts look like rounded eggshells. This is to help you remember that hydatid cysts within the liver demonstrate eggshell calcifications on imaging. Again, this whole part of the image is to help you remember that hydatid cysts form in the liver. Now this is a CT scan showing a hydatid cyst within the liver. These can grow and look like a tumor. That's a huge cyst. And on the outside, you can see this eggshell calcification. And seeing that should tip you off that this is a hydatid cyst, not a tumor. Now here's an image of a hydatid cyst from Echinococcus granulosus. Humongous. And you can see here that there would be that outer calcified edge, giving it that eggshell calcification appearance on imaging. With all those cysts in the liver, it makes sense that infected patients would get hepatomegaly. They just have this giant cyst growing in the liver, so their liver will get huge. To help you remember hepatomegaly, think of how big this beanbag is compared to this small old man. So giant liver-shaped beanbag for hydatid cysts causing hepatomegaly. Now it's super important to keep these cysts from rupturing. If they rupture, it can be catastrophic. Upon rupture, 
they release a concentrated amount of allergens that can trigger an anaphylactic response. This can be deadly. To help you remember this, we've shown one of the beanbag cysts rupture, releasing beanbag contents. All these little particles have reached this poor granddaughter, touching her skin in many places. She is deathly allergic to beanbag filling, apparently, so now she's going into anaphylactic shock, as you can tell by her red face and the fact that she's holding her throat, as if she's unable to breathe. So again, cyst rupture can cause deadly anaphylaxis. Now let's discuss treatment. To treat patients, you need to surgically remove the hydatid cyst from the liver. However, surgical removal is dangerous because cysts can rupture so easily. For this reason, surgeons will kill the cyst and its contents first. They do this by giving the patient a medication called albendazole. To help you remember albendazole, we've shown this little book being destroyed by the puppy. The title of the book is Harry Porter and Albus. You may remember that Albus was a great wizard mentor to Harry Porter. Anyways, Albus stands for albendazole. So always treat the patient first with albendazole. After the albendazole regimen, the patient is taken for surgery. And just prior to cutting out the hydatid cyst, the surgeon will inject it with alcohol. And to help you remember the use of alcohol, we have shown this granny's bottle of alcohol getting knocked over by one of her cocks. Perhaps it's her alcohol problem that turned her into a kooky cock lady. Anyways, look at that alcohol drip down to this area. This should help you remember that you need to inject the cyst with alcohol. The final step, of course, is surgical removal. As you may have noticed, this insisted puppy has gotten into Granny's medical supplies and revealed a sharp scalpel. This scalpel represents surgery, and since it's the definitive treatment, your goal is to get to this point. You want to surgically remove it, but in preparation for that, give a full regimen of albendazole and then inject the cyst with alcohol. Now that we've covered all the items in the image, let's do a question to apply what you've learned. A 45-year-old female presents to the physician with right upper quadrant pain. Physical examination reveals hepatomegaly. A CT scan is performed, which reveals a liver mass surrounded by a white ring of calcification. The mass is not consistent with an abscess. Plans are made to surgically remove the mass following an albendazole regimen. How did the patient most likely acquire the infection causing the mass? Now hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient has a parasite infection from echinococcus granulosis. She has right upper quadrant pain, and she has hepatomegaly, and a CT scan reveals a liver mass with a white ring of calcification around it. This is referring to eggshell calcifications. We also learn that the physician will surgically remove the mass after administering albendazole. This is the correct regimen for removing hydatid cysts from the liver. So with echinococcus granulosis in mind, how did the patient most likely acquire the infection? That would be choice B, eggs in dog feces. Recall that this dog left behind this poopy stain, upon which the chicken laid her eggs. Then the grandpa ate some of those eggs. This represents the fact that humans get the parasite by eating eggs found in dog feces. Now choice A is wrong because larvae are not ingested from dog feces. Eggs are, as I just mentioned. However, once inside the intestines, the eggs will hatch and release larvae but the larvae are not eaten. And choice C is wrong because sheep are the intermediate host, which means they can infect dogs. But humans don't get their infection from sheep. Humans get them from the dog feces, which produce the eggs. Finally, choice D is wrong for the same reason as choice C. The sheep is not where humans get the infection. That's where dogs get the infection. And that should be all you need to know about echinococcus granulosis.